What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for those of you that follow the channel. If you're just checking out the classified ads, as you guys may or may not know, the sand rail is up for sale. It's been on the market a couple weeks now. I promised you, several of you guys I was going to finally get to a walk around video. I know a lot of you are down south, southern California, Phoenix area, somewhere in between. Not everybody's up here in the Pacific Northwest. The car is located here near Tacoma, Washington. I'll kind of go through a walkthrough. I'm sure I'm going to forget some stuff. If you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up anytime. I try to, to answer everything I can. Uh, you can reach out to me via email at dunerunner, with the number 400, at yahoo.com. Or if you're on Facebook or Marketplace or wherever else you may see this, feel free to text me or DM me or whatever. I'll try to be on top of things and, and check all of it. So the car is a 2005 Borgette Fat 5. As it states, it is a five-seat car. We got the dual buckets up front, bench in the rear. It's a really clean car. It's not perfect. It is used for off-road use, but it's a beautiful car. It certainly stands out out there on the sand. I constantly get compliments about how clean the car is. There, there's not a lot of boogery welds on the car or, or goofy afterthoughts. Everything's been pretty well thought out. It's not, you know, a fifty plus thousand dollar car. I do have the car priced at thirty six thousand five hundred. It's an immaculate car for the price range. It's an LS1 5.7 aluminum block with the Mendiola 2D. It has a recent rebuild from Mark Santrans. I have a pile of receipts for everything that I have done to the car. I've owned the rail about three and a half years now. Uh, unfortunately, up here in the Northwest, we don't get to utilize the cars quite as often as you guys might get to use them down south. I consider this last year a pretty good year. I had the car out three times. That's like four day weekend trips to run down there. The wife just doesn't quite enjoy it like I do. I've got small kids, so it makes the trips extremely difficult. So that's the only reason the car is even on the market. I'm not in a hurry to get rid of the car. I'm not stressed financially to get rid of the car. If somebody wants to enjoy it and is willing to pay what I'm asking for the vehicle, which I believe it is well worth, I'll let the car go. If not, I'm going to keep enjoying the rail and playing with it as often as I can. So like I said, I'm sure I'm going to forget a few things. We can start inside the car. I've got new crow harnesses up front. Both of these were replaced. I've got like a trip on them. Got three crow harnesses in the bench in the rear. These are older harnesses. Everything's really clean. You've got some very minor scuffs around the piping and, and different things on the car. Other than that, it's in great shape. Added some storage back here to the back. My wife is always cold, so one of the things I did, I tore apart the seats. They've got added foam to them, as well as heated front seats. Up front here, all your controls. Got USB outlets, all the light controls. Car running the PCI ICOM radio. Get your controls here. I've got four good PCI headsets. I put new earpieces and mouthpieces on these when I bought it. Just to replace kind of the, the worn out items. Uh, it's got a brand new Momo steering wheel on the car. Uh, I run got a ram mount up front here kind of block some of the gauges you can keep that or move it i run an eight inch tablet in the car uh, it has underbody led lights all throughout as well as the starlight led whips everything is bluetooth controlled so i'm able to use the tablet and i run the, the offline maps as well as control all the the bluetooth lighting from here i got a couple aluminum hangers up there pedals try and get you guys a Good view of the interior here. It's a large car. This will comfortably seat five adults, no problem. It's a, a pretty comfortable ride. It's running a Ron Davis aluminum radiator, dual electric fans. Both the fans are new. I've replaced those recently as well. Let's see if I can get a good shot under here of those. And I actually, my father, the machinist, custom made me some aluminum mounts for the fans. So those cheesy plastic ones that usually come with those electric fans. Those broke on me a time or two. So that problem's been solved.
Here we are on the right side of the rail. These are renegade seats. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. I believe they're no longer in business, unfortunately. But really, they're in pretty good shape. Again, you guys hit me up if there's something that I don't show that you'd like to see and, and let me know. Uh, the roof is something new. That's something I added within the last year here. It is removable, just stainless button heads on the roof. Uh, this is a wrap. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, the car sits kind of tall, so not a lot of people get to see it. Uh, the rest of the car, for the most part, is painted. This is all, all airbrush. Painted frames, obviously all powder coated. Uh, added the family names. These are the decals can come off. Uh, the other things I added here. So the radiator cover here. This is a vinyl wrap, as well as the top of the fin. And uh, back here was a big airbrushed Borgette Racing logo. So this has been put on there. That's a vinyl wrap as well. Otherwise, everything else is is all painted on the car. Uh, the reason I did that, like I said, this car came out of Phoenix. I drug it home. From down south there these upper portions of the car where the green was a little bit bleached out from the the uv rays and the sun you guys get down there not exactly a problem we deal with up here but you can kind of tell the roof hood here is a, a little bit off green from the rest of it slight slight variation there you can see most people never notice i'm a nitpicky so that's why i went ahead and put vinyl wrap on those otherwise the rest is all airbrushed and painted So I added the side mirrors. These are super handy. I get nervous anytime I'm out riding with a lot of quads. Somebody come up on the side of me about the time I decide to make a turn. Last thing I want to do is take somebody out. Seeing lights up like Clark Griswold at night. I have individual controls. We've got the large light bar. We've got four pods hiding here. Cool little bug eyeballs, as well as these kind of going off at the angle at the side there, which is really cool. Super bright at night, not a problem. Up front here, I've got brand new Fox 2.0, piggyback reservoir shocks, silver matching iBox springs, <clears throat> got new limiting straps up front. One of the coolest things I added to the car since I got it was the electric power steering, something I wish I had added. When I first bought the car, absolute world of difference. I wish I'd put that on there a long time ago. You can literally steer the thing with a pinky. What, what a world of difference. I also went through the front end. These are all, all new FK Heim joints. Stainless jam nuts. USA made. Had some squeaking up front. I'm sure it'll come back, but nice and tight. Nothing wore out up here. Nice and quiet. All new hardware when I replace those. Sorry, I'm going kind of quick. I'm, we're getting about dusk here. I'm fighting daylight. Go through real quick. I'll actually power it up for you. So you can see this. It just steering super, super easy. What, what an improvement. Even if you guys aren't interested in the car, if you're considering adding electric power steering to your rail, I strongly recommend it. So you now you guys can kind of see now they got it powered up the, the op lighting under here some up under the hood all up underneath the car different modes you can have it solid state you can have it flash cycle through the colors like it's doing now all up through the back here as well as well as the, the starlight whips Get on my phone here, it's all Bluetooth control, like I said, the OP7 lighting. I also have this, like I said, on the tablet I mount on there. So next, and then I can shut them off. Turn them back on, we can go solid state. Find a and a nice, nice green to go with the car. Same with these. You can pick a thousand different combinations. Speed, you can play with them all day if you want. Kind of neat.
So the important stuff's all back here in the rear. Obviously, it's a 5.7 aluminum block LS1 motor. Pretty much a stock motor. It's got an LS6 intake manifold on it. New MSD wires, new spark plugs. It's running Diablo headers, both sides. It's got a, an MEFI ECU. Strong running motor. I've never had any issues with it. Through replaced all the, the little coolant elbows. New belt. Other than that, other than changing the oil and maintaining it, I haven't had to do anything to motor. It's a strong running car. It's really smooth. The transaxle, like I said, it is the 2D. It's been gone through recently by Mark Santrans. All the Weddell internals, got a new ring and pinion in there. Uh, I got a whole list, I got the receipts, whole list of things that Mark went through and replaced in there, most of which I know nothing about. Mark's a good guy though taking care of everything. I, I trust him with pretty much anything transaxle related. It's so running RCV 930 CV joints, all four corners here, the 300M CVs. I put a AGM CV savers in it and we're running the over the boot style boots on it. I've never broken a CV or an axle on it. Knock on wood. So our gear one hubs and brakes back here in the rear. We're running beadlock wheels in the rear. Spindle mounts up front. I replaced all the tires as soon as I bought it. These are Sand Tire Unlimited Sandblaster 33s. So you can see they've still pretty much got the nubs all over. They have a handful of trips on the car. Barely worn off even on the paddles. I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. So the tires are all in fantastic condition. I replaced the, the wheel bearings, both front and rear, have all been gone through. Those are all new. Everything from this side here. The fuel tank is sandwiched back here behind the rear seat. Don't quote me, it's roughly 12, 13 gallons, give or take. A little bit of storage back here in the fan, as well as the intake. Air filter back here. So all the electronics are underneath of the rear seat, so they're protected, stay dry. It's got a couple of Optima red top batteries under there as well. Uh, obviously got a couple decent trailer tires. Uh, the back of the car, is roughly 84 inches wide with the trailer tires on it the car itself from the front of the front tires to the back of this little piece of the fin that sticks out an extra few inches is like 16 foot three inches and here at the tallest point of the car with the trailer tires on it's about 66 inches tall i seem to get asked that question quite a bit i know everybody's trying to squeeze it into whatever trailer they've got with the paddles on i, I haven't measured it it is a pretty wide car uh, it's running an air motive. There, we can see there it is. Fuel pump under there. Get your filters and everything else. So I know what everybody's really waiting for. I'll go ahead and fire it up for you.
kick on all the lights so you guys can see all that works. Rather blinding. Everything's controlled independently as you guys saw. Picks it up very well. The bug eyes can have a nice green glow around them. Pretty cool. Kids seem to like them. The other thing I forgot to point out, I converted it over with the, the Pro Am shifter in here with the U joints. Makes shifting a breeze with this. Night and day difference from what was in here. Again. Mark Santran sold me on that. One of the best improvements I've made yet, along with the power steering. Th those two. Strong running car, no problems to speak of. Anything and everything that I've found, any of the maintenance things, I've tried to go through pretty much the entire car. Uh, Mark geared the car a little bit lower when he went through the transaxle. That way the vehicle spends most of its time duning in about third gear because it's a, a larger gear. I trusted him on all that. I'm taking his word for it, just relaying the message that was given to me when I had him go through it and rebuild it. It's like a $3,800 rebuild on the transaxle. Uh, so there's no need to drop or hammer on the clutch. Uh, when I went through that as well, it's got to replace the clutch since I had everything apart. It's got a dual 8-inch, uh, the, the twin disc Kennedy clutch in there, all brand new. So the, the car's got a great power band, second, third gear. If you just hang into it, it it'll, it'll wheelie no problem. There's no need to hammer on the clutch to get that to happen. So it's a little bit easier on the transaxle when you're in a third which is a beefier gear and you just power on the throttle into that and lift the front end right up no problem uh <clears throat> front end's real lightweight on the on this rail not a lot of heavy baggage you can just about lift the thing with one person so i'll go through the couple of of negatives of the car it's all aesthetic uh, as you can see right here on the side panel so before i purchased the car I was told somebody ran into it, so you can see it left a couple of divots here. A little mark here on the, the aluminum side panel. Let's see if I can get in there as well. Is this tube has been broken and repaired. Now it was sleeved and plugged. You can kind of see the welds. Hopefully the camera's picking them up. So it was properly repaired. And it was just touched up with paint, so that's why it looks a little bit off. Other than that, the only obvious other aesthetic issue that I have, and it was like this when I bought the car as well, is back here. You guys probably saw the, the powder coat is, is stained. Something got on here and, and ran and trickled down there and, and stained the powder coat. Like I said, it was like that when I bought the car. The previous owner I bought it from, his uncle actually had the car built. Even they couldn't tell me what got on here and what stained that powder coat. You know, just is what it is not too terribly noticeable compared to the rest of the car didn't bother me a whole lot certainly doesn't affect the functionality the only other issue is there was one small crack back down here that has also been sleeved and welded and repaired other than that I found no other cracks or, or issues on the rail itself like I said I've, I've been all through it as best I can at this point guys hit me up if you have any other questions like i said if there's anything else that you want to see that i didn't show if you follow or if you don't follow the youtube channel uh the several videos of the car actually out duning 
check them out if you want to i've even done cv service videos as well so you guys can check those out as well thanks again for watching feel free to like the video subscribe to the channel hit me up with any questions we'll see you on the next one